there, welcome. This is a part of an informative video series presented to you by Wastelands. In this video, you will learn about the elements of Google Cloud Resource Hierarchy. The Google Cloud Resource Hierarchy and the resources that can be handled with Resource Manager are described here. The Google Cloud Resource Hierarchy serves two purposes. One, creates an ownership hierarchy that ties a resource's lifecycle to its immediate parent in the hierarchy. Two, provide attach points for access control and organization policies, as well as inheritance. As a metaphor for organizing and managing entities hierarchically, the Google Cloud Resource Hierarchy mirrors the file system in traditional operating systems. There is only one parent for each resource. You can specify access control rules and configuration settings on a parent resource, and the policies and identity and access management settings are inherited by the child resources because of the hierarchical organization of resources. Resources are the core components that make up all Google Cloud services at their most basic level. Compute Engine Virtual Machines, PubSub Topics, Cloud Storage Buckets and App Engine Instances are examples of resources. All of these lower-level resources can only be parented by projects, which constitute the Google Cloud Resource Hierarchy's first grouping mechanism. Customers of Google Workspace and Cloud Identity have access to additional Google Cloud Resource Hierarchy features such as centralized visibility and control, as well as additional grouping mechanisms such as folders. Let us learn more about Cloud Identity in this overview. Google Cloud Resources are arranged in a logical order. Projects are the first level of the hierarchy, starting at the bottom and including other resources. Except for organizations, all resources have only one parent. There is no parent for the organization, which is at the top of the hierarchy. All resources that belong to an organization are grouped under the organization resource, which is the root node of the Google Cloud Resource hierarchy. This gives a company centralized visibility and control over all of its resources. On top of projects, folders provide an extra organizing method. Before you can use folders, you must first have an organization resource. Under the organization resource, folders and projects are all mapped. Google Cloud Resource Hierarchy, particularly in its most full form, which includes an organization resource and folders, enables businesses to map their organizations onto Google Cloud and provides logical attach points for IAM and organization regulations. Both IAM and organization policies are sent down via the hierarchy and the effective policy at each node is the result of policies implemented directly at the node and policies passed down from its forefathers. The organization resource. The organization resource is the root node in the Google Cloud resource hierarchy representing an organization. Project resources and folders have a hierarchical ancestor in the organization resource. The IAM access control policies that are applied to the organization resource are applied to all resources in the organization throughout the hierarchy. Users of Google Cloud are not required to have an organization resource, but without one, some resource manager services would be unavailable. A Google Workspace or Cloud Identity account is closely related to the organization resource. When a Google Workspace or Cloud Identity user creates a Google Cloud project, an organization resource is created for them automatically. Only one organization can be associated with a Google Workspace or Cloud Identity account. All Google Cloud projects created by members of the account domain will, by default, belong to the organization resource whenever an organization resource is created for a domain. When a managed user creates a project, it must belong to one of the organizations. The project is assigned to an organization if a user provides one and has the appropriate permissions. If not, it will default to the organization with which the user is associated. It's impossible to start a project without being affiliated with a company. Organizational resource benefits. Projects developed with an organization resource belong to your organization rather than the individual who generated them. 
This means that when a person leaves a firm, their projects are no longer deleted, but instead follow the organization's lifespan on Google Cloud. Furthermore, all resources are within the jurisdiction of the organization's management. They have access to and control over all of your company's projects. There can be no longer be shadow projects or rogue administrators as a result of this regulation. You can also assign roles at the organization level, which are passed down to all projects and folders in the organization resource. Instead of giving your networking team the network admin position for every individual project, you can give them the role at the organization level, allowing them to manage all the networks in all of your company's projects. Let us now see the elements of an organization resource offered by the Resource Manager API. An organization ID is one-of-a-kind identification for a company. In Google Workspace or Cloud Identity, a display name is produced from the primary domain name. The organization startup period. The organization's most recent modification time. The organization's founder. When the organization resource is created, the owner is supplied. Once it's set, it can't be modified. The customer ID for Google Workspace is supplied in the directory API. The folder resource. Folder resources provide an extra grouping technique as well as project isolation barriers. Within the organization, they might be viewed as sub-organizations. Within a company, folders can be used to represent several legal entities, departments, and teams. A first level of folders, for example, could be utilized to represent your company's key departments. Because folders can contain projects and other folders, each folder can have subfolders that represent different teams. Each team folder could have multiple subfolders to represent various apps. Let's see creating and managing folders for more information on how to use folders. You can see folder resources from the Google Cloud Console if they exist in your organization and you have sufficient viewing permissions. See viewing or listing folders and projects for further information. Folders allow administrative permissions to be delegated. So each department head, for example, can be granted full ownership of all Google Cloud resources that belong to his or her department. Similarly, resource access can be restricted by folder, allowing users in one department to only access and create cloud resources in that folder. The project resource. The project resource is the organizational entity at the most fundamental level. Multiple projects can be found in organizations and folders. To utilize Google Cloud, you must first create a project, which serves as the foundation for establishing, enabling, and using all Google Cloud services, as well as managing APIs, billing, adding and removing collaborators, and controlling permissions. The following are included in every project. There are two identifiers. One, the project ID, which is a one-of-a-kind identification. Two, the project number, which is assigned automatically when the project is created. It's a read-only file. There is just one display name that can be changed. The project's lifetime state, such as active or delete requested. A set of labels that can be used to sort and filter projects. When the project was originally started, this is the date. You must give the identifying project information for each request in order to interact with most Google Cloud resources. A project can be identified in one of two ways, by its ID or by its number. A project ID is a name you gave the project when you first started it. If you use an API that requires a project, you'll be prompted to create one or select one using its project ID. You should note that the project ID is not the same as the name string presented in the UI. Google Cloud generates a project number automatically. The project ID and project number can both be accessed on the project's dashboard in Google Cloud Console. Go to creating and managing projects for information on obtaining project identifiers and other project management activities. The owner role is granted to the project creator in the initial IAM policy for the newly created project resource. IAM Policy Inheritance 
iAIM is a Google Cloud feature that allows you to offer granular access to specific Google Cloud resources while blocking illegal access to others. Setting IAM policies on resources allows you to govern who, that is users, has what access, that is roles, to which resources. In some circumstances, IAM policies can be specified at the organization level, folder level, project level or resource level. The policies of the parent node are sent down to the resources. If you establish a policy at the organization level, all of its child folders and projects inherit it. And if you set a policy at the project level, all of its child resources inherit it. A resources effective policy is the sum of the policies that have been implemented to it and the policies that have been passed down from its predecessors. This is a transitive inheritance. In other words, resources are bound by the policies of the project, which are bound by the policies of the organization. As a result, policies that apply at the organization level also apply at the resource level. If you create a policy on folder department Y that gives Bob at the rate example dot com the project editor role, Bob will be able to edit projects. Dev GCP project test GCP project and in the resource hierarchy diagram above look for production GCP project. If you give Alice at the example.com the instance admin role on the project test GCP project she can only manage compute engine instances in that project. Rare roles are always inherited and there is no mechanism to explicitly withdraw permission granted at a higher level in the resource hierarchy for a lower level resource. Given the preceding example, even if you removed Bob's project editor role from the test GCP project, he would still inherit it from the department Y folder, giving him access to the test GCP project. The Google Cloud Resource hierarchy and the IAM policy hierarchy both follow the same path. When you update the resource hierarchy, you must also change the policy hierarchy. The IAM policy of a project that is moved into an organization is changed to inherit from the organization's IAM policy. Moving a project from one folder to another, on the other hand, will modify the inherited rights. When a project is relocated to a new folder, whatever permissions it inherited from its original parent will be lost. As the project is relocated, it will inherit the permissions provided in the target folder. Hope you've understood the concept of the elements of Google Cloud Resource Hierarchy. With this, we conclude this topic. Thank you for watching this video.